hello everyone. I'm uh, Ruo Qingwang from the Hong Kong University of Science. Uh, so my project is quite different with the previous, uh, previous uh, presentation. It's about a sensor, it's about, a, about a flexible sensor uh, to we use it to monitor the human uh, as a demonstration. So it's basically more focusing on the sensor itself. So uh, I will talk about the background and the objective of this project, and then method, how we design the sensor, and then we start determine the result, and lastly, the discussion. So pressure sensor, especially the flexible pressure sensor, have been widely used in the human machine direction and uh, human health monitoring applications. Uh, it can be integrated with a wearable device, such as a glove, so it can capture the hand gesture or the finger movement. Uh, and using the signal we read out from the gloves, we can control a robot hand uh, remotely, or we can reproduce the movement in the virtual world, which may benefit the VR industry in the future. And furthermore, it can also be attached to a certain area of the human body to monitor the uh, physiological signals and the body gestures to help people improve their daily habits and monitor the body condition in real time. So uh, basically, there are four most popular sensing mechanisms of the flexible pressure sensor, which, uh, which are the uh, piezo-resistive uh, capacitance, piezo-electricity, and uh, triple electricity. So piezo-resistivity uh, piezo pressure sensors have a simple device structure, uh, easy signal readout, high accuracy, and low cost, making them a popular candidate for the uh, various uh, applications. And the basic principle of uh, piezo-resistive pressure sensors is that at the beginning, there are uh, conducted, uh, let me have a laser pointer, yes. Uh, there are uh, conducted passes uh, in the sensor itself. And, you, and usually people will use the, like the nano uh, carbon tube or the uh, graphene or the uh, signal nano wire to form the conductive path. And the path will be sealed in a non-conductive uh, flexible material to hold the conductive network. And when pressure applied on the sensor, the sensor will be compressed. And some, uh, some of the conductive path will be brick. And also some new conductive path will be formed. So this will change the resistance of the whole sensor. And that's basically uh, how this type of sensor works. So to further enhance the performance of the sensor, some people begin to make microstructures on the surface. Uh, let's imagine if it's a flat surface of the sensor, the pressure will be distributed evenly. So, uh, and the pressure on each point is uniform and it will be small because it's distributed. But if we use the microstructure, only the peaks of the structure will contact with the supporting surface. And the contact area will be uh, very small uh, and that can make the local pressure very high. So even a small pressure applied on the sensor will cause the obvious deformation of the microstructure and leading to obvious uh, resistance variation. So based on this method, researchers have developed various uh, microstructures, the regular shape, irregular shaped, and someone even uh, developed double layer and multi-layer microstructures to enhance the sensing performance, especially the sensitivity and the sensing range. So in this work, we are using a new microstructure to see if it can show better performance comparing with other geometries. So uh, in the title of this uh, report, uh, there is a word that may sound unfamiliar, to you, which is uh, neural ori. So let me briefly uh, introduce it here. Neural ori is a typical form of the origami. So, okay, another unfamiliar word. So what is origami? Origami is an Asian art of uh, from Asia. Ori means the folding and uh, gami means paper. So origami means the art of paper folding. Origami have a uh, lot of shapes and patterns and neural ori is just one of them. And in the last decades, researchers have applied origami structure 
uh, into various real life applications, especially in flexible electronics and soft robotics area. So the most popular type of origami that researchers prefer to use is the neural restructure. So as shown in the video, neural array structure is like an array of a single unit with a certain mountain-like geometry. So here shows how we apply neural array structure into our sensor. The sensor have two layers. The bottom layer is, uh, is the interdigital electrode, and the upper layer is the PDMS, which is a silicon, uh, a silicon, a flexible material. And uh, the upper layer is a PDMS with the microstructure on the surface. And here shows the single unit of the, uh, sorry, oh, okay. The pink one is the single unit of the mirror structure. And we can see uh, the microstructure array clearly under the SEM. And this design is quite uh, straightforward. And we use the carbon nanotubes as the conducting materials. Uh, rather than mix the uh, carbon nanotube into the PDMS uniformly, we choose to make the CNT uh, densely on the surface of the neural structure. So it's kind of like the doping process in the microfabrication. Uh, if you are familiar with MAMS, they may help you to understand what we're doing here. Uh, and I will talk about the fabrication later. So as shown in the figure one on the right side, uh, we have the CNT network on the on the surface. And here shows the zoom in structure of the CNT network at the beginning. So when we apply the pressure uh, onto the sensor at the beginning, uh, this contact area will change, will become large, and then it will uh, reduce the resistance of the whole uh, sensor. And if we increase the pressure, uh, at some point, the structure will be pressed to fully flat and contact with the uh, bottom electrode. And if we further increase the pressure, this conducting network will also be compressed and it will also affect the resistance of the sensor. So there are mainly two uh, mechanisms that affect the resistance of the sensor. One is the uh, variation related to the contact area, and the other one is the uh, variation related to the density of the CNT network. So here comes to the fabrication process, how we make the sensor. So at the beginning, we need to prepare two things. First thing is the solution, the CNT solution with the ethyl alcohol. We mix them together and use ultrasonic steering to mix them well. And then uh, we need to prepare the mirror or remote and we use 3D printing to make this shape. And we, when we have these two things, we use a free coating process to coat the uh, solution to the mold uniformly. And uh, after that, we will evaporate all the uh, ethyl alcohol and only keep the CNT network on the surface. And after that, uh, we will spin coat a layer of the PDMS and cure it to, uh, to hold the whole network. And after that, we will peel off some load. We can see that there is no CNT uh, particles remain on the mode. That means all the CNT network is being locked into the CNMS. And after that, we cut and uh, assemble it with the electrode. Uh, again, uh, here's how we uh, ex experiment set up of this. Uh, we use a universal testing machine to control, precisely control the pressure applied on the sensor. And we use an LCI meter to without the signal. Uh, in order to investigate how the microstructure affects the sensing performance, we fabricated other three commonly used uh, microstructure with the same feature size and test them under the same experiment condition. So from the figure, we can see that the neural array, which is the red one, is the, shows the best uh, sensitivity uh, in the range of zero to seven, uh, 700 kilopascal. And one more thing we can uh, we need to pay attention is that uh, we can see here <coughs> the red line is still going up 
but the other is uh, tend to be going flat, which means uh, the mirror array may have a, a wider uh, sensing range, but our our equipment can only apply pressure to uh, 700, so we cannot test this. Out. But from the trend, we can see that. And here is some uh, stability uh, stability test and uh, response time test. We did it uh, a thousand times of repeat uh, press. It shows good uh, stability. And the uh, response time is very fast, it's around uh, 75 uh, microseconds. And we also attach them to the wrist to detect the pulse signal and also attach it here to detect the swallowing signal. So it shows good performance. So to sum up, uh, this sensor is designed for the specific scenario. We want to compare for different uh, structure to see if the mirror is better. So we didn't make it put it to limit to get the best performance. But there are several ways that may further improve the performance. The first thing is that we can shrink the size of the microstructure. Because we are using the uh, 3D printing, so we cannot make the structure super small, but also keep uh, good geometry. So we use another uh, method. We use a uh, different sandpaper with different roughness to test the how the feature size affects this uh, this sensor. And we found that around twenty to thirty uh, micrometer feature size should be the best uh, can can perform best uh, sensitivity. And also we can modify the origami design parameters. Uh, it can it may be uh, also increase the and most importantly, we can use different material, uh, ex more expensive material, like the Maxine or Gauchin, as the uh, nano feeder to uh, form the conductive path, and it may show better uh, sensitive performance. Okay, that's all of my presentation today. Thank you very much.